When staring down at a bowl of ramen noodles, what are you first bound to notice? Perhaps it's the soft, bouncy noodles, or maybe it's the flavorful broth that the noodles swim in, the slices of meat that sit on top of everything, or the scallions that complement the dish and add color. The egg, the Naruto, the tiny seaweed on the side of the bowl, really, any of those answers aren't wrong by any stretch of the imagination. But for this one moment, I ask you to look at the bowl just a little bit closer, to look past the surface level details of the bowl and find something that, admittedly, I was really unable to see at one point. Or at least until I saw a unique little film that can only be described as cinema's first ramen western. Juzo Itami's Tampopo is an offbeat Japanese comedy about the trials and tribulations of cultivating one's craft. The craft in this film's specific case, ramen. The story follows a cowboy trucker, the rugged and mysterious Goro, and his partner Goon, who find themselves immersed in the troubled world of Tampopo, a widowed noodle shop owner who is struggling to make ends meet for her and her young son. As the film progresses, the two truckers, with the assistance of an oddball group of allies, help Tampopo painstakingly take her culinary understanding from a novice level to something more proficient while becoming a confident competitor in her field and a future success. When I first discovered the film, I found myself completely transfixed with the bizarre world the film inhabits while being completely won over by its undeniable charm. Everyone has that one piece of media that inspires them to be creative and think outside of the box, and Tampopo is that very film for me. Hell, the poster constantly stares at me whenever I'm working on anything for this channel. I love this movie, and have always fought for every excuse to talk about it and recommend it to anyone who even cares to listen. And since I started Static Wonderland, I've always known I wanted to find a reason to make a video about this movie and explain just why I love it so much and why you should really seek it out. And with a movie like this, there's really so much you can talk about and dive into. The way food is captured and how you can practically smell and taste every dish presented on screen. If you need the warning, don't watch this movie when you have nothing to eat always have a meal in front of you when watching this movie, preferably a bowl of some good noodles. The wonderfully dynamic cinematography and the way Itami pays tribute to the work of his most admired filmmakers like Hitchcock, Altman, or Louis Benol. Seriously, some of these shots are absolutely gorgeous and are packed with so much character. This is a movie that visually you can really live in. Or, heck, you can even talk about the unique idea of a Japanese ramen western, a play on the spaghetti western genre that Tommy draws heavily from for his main character, the drifter who pops into town to help the downtrodden before moving on to their next adventure. <laughs> But even me just limiting the experience of the film down to simply those elements does the movie an injustice. Tampopo, while a wonderful food movie that is very finely made, is also a love letter to anyone obsessed with their craft and who work tirelessly to improve it. Whether that be something like food, writing, or art of any kind, the film is a celebration for anyone who has ever strived to better their craft for the enjoyment of themselves or anyone else. I find myself coming back to this movie so much because it's a film that challenges me to ask the question of why? Why do I or anyone else work so hard to create anything? For Tampopo, the answer to that question is initially pretty simple. She's desperate to make her shop successful so she can take care of her family, something that can't happen until she learns to improve her process of making food, something that Goro and Goon are pretty quick to criticize in the opening moments of the film. Tampopo doesn't really have any starry-eyed dreams of being a star chef or a world-famous ramen expert. Her goals are very tangible and have to do with something outside of herself. She could be doing anything else, but this shop was something that was just dropped on her lap after the passing of her husband, and she's just trying to make the best out of what life has given her. 
but it's only when Goro begins to mentor her and help cultivate her skills as a cook and restaurant owner that she really begins to think of her profession as something more rewarding. What starts off as physical training and cardio exercise to teach Tampopo how to simply move in the kitchen steadily turns into carefully observing other chefs in their element to find why they move the way that they do, or how they communicate with and pay attention to their customers. Growing from someone the timid but eager to improve for the sake of survival, to someone who shows curiosity for the smaller details of cooking and how she can bend and mold it into something to define herself and her place as a restaurant owner. But on her journey to self-fulfillment, we begin to see that there's more to bettering one's craft than simply getting a better understanding of its inner workings. As Tampopo and her mentors progress in their mission for the perfect bowl of ramen, the film drifts into small vignettes that pair well with the central conflict. A ramen expert who shows someone the quote-unquote correct way to eat and appreciate a good bowl of ramen. A store clerk who is trying to keep an odd woman from ruining all of their food. A woman who, in her last moments of life, spends it making a last meal for her family to remember her by. A gangster who indulges in food in the most, um, perverse ways? And my personal favorite, the corporate underling who shows up the snooty higher-ups with his extensive culinary expertise. All small windows into the lives of a variety of characters, some more eccentric than others, that represent different levels of appreciation for food and how it positively affects their lives. Because if Tampopo and Goro's journey towards self-improvement is about the highs and lows of becoming a better creator, these stories highlight the relationship between the creator and those who consume their work, and why that's so important. I bring it back to that question I asked a few moments ago. Why do we create anything? The question itself seems broad because there are a million different reasons someone chooses to create anything. But Tampopo answers it in very simple but meaningful terms. Because it's the most human thing we can do. Sometimes it's because we want to make a hard and messy situation work to our advantage. Sometimes it's because we believe in standing up for and enriching the lives of those with the most untapped potential. Perhaps it's because it's a way of showing our love and appreciation for those around us. Or just because in the sea of people always looking to make us feel small, it's just what we can do to rebel against them. And therefore, we should always strive to improve our craft and make it more enriching. Not just for ourselves, but for the ones who find joy and meaning in what we make. Because as our hero says at one point in the film, We have to listen to those who consume our work to always improve upon it. If we don't, then the value of what we make begins to dwindle and it can all begin to feel meaningless. And Atami backs this statement up even further by asking those who enjoy the creator's work to appreciate the small quirks and nuances that exist within it. Because no matter what those things could be, someone had to work tirelessly to discover them and mold them into something that's them. Even if this ramen master almost fetishizes his bowl of ramen, he's demonstrating an appreciation for something he values and what someone else worked so hard to make. It's why scenes like Tampopo and Goro standing up to the successful ramen chefs who are too arrogant to improve their work or accept criticism always inspires me to do better. Or why the scenes of our heroes learning from a band of homeless people who've learned to cook meals from scraps of food thrown away by high-end restaurants are so wonderful and humbling to think about. Or why Tampopo's endearing journey from struggling amateur to a confident force in her own element is so easy to come back to over and over again. And it's why the movie has always made me strive to be a better creator and to achieve more than what I initially think I can do. But more importantly, it's made me look at what all creators of the world have provided to me and to look deeper and find some level of appreciation for their process and how I can take that and learn from it so I can give back in my own way. Because at the end of the day, the table my partner and I eat dinner on every night was worked on tirelessly every day and night by one person. Our favorite book was probably rewritten over and over again through many frustrating and demoralizing weeks by their author. 
even the video you're watching right now took longer than its runtime to make. I can't express this enough. Find this movie. It's such a special treat, and I'm dying to see what you think of it and what you get out of it. But with that, let's turn back to that bowl of ramen I asked you about in the beginning. Beyond the noodles and the broth and the other little fixings that complement and fill the dish, what do you see?